Hi there and welcome. This is Jennifer McGuire and I hope you're having a great day. Well, I remember when I first started learning about stamping, one technique that really impressed me and caught my eye was the resist technique. Since then, I've learned many, many different types of resist techniques where you do stamping, apply ink or, or watercolor or anything over it and it resists that color. I thought it'd be fun to pull several of these resist techniques together in one video so you can refer back to it whenever you're looking for something new to do. I have lots of card examples and they all feature the new Hero Art My Monthly Hero May Kit. This kit is packed full with a large 6x8 stamp set, coordinating dies, stencil, and some accents. Now this is one of those kits that's worth double what you pay for, so it's really a good investment. I really like the classic storybook style of this month's set, and I'm going to use it for all of my resist techniques. But keep in mind, resist techniques can be done with any stamps you may already have, and throughout the video, I'll mention which resist techniques work best with different styles of stamps. Let's start with traditional resist. This is the first resist technique that I ever learned that knocked my socks off and had me hooked. For this one, you'll need specialty paper. But first, let's get everything ready to do the resist technique. Right here, I just have a piece of white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm placing this oval die and this tree frame die right at the center and running it through my die cut machine. These dies are included in that My Monthly Hero May kit. For my card, I decided to cut the swing off because I'll stamp the swing instead. Now for the actual resist technique, I'm using Ranger Specialty Stamping Paper. This is a really cool um, coated cardstock that is a little bit slick and is fun for techniques. If you don't have this paper, you can use glossy cardstock instead. I'm taping that paper into my MISTI and then I'm placing the frame over it temporarily just so I can position my stamps. You don't need a MISTI stamping tool for this technique. However, since I'm making multiple cards, I thought it would be handy. I'm positioning the little girl on a swing, a sentiment, a dog image, and leaves from that monthly hero kit, transferring it onto the door of my MISTI, removing the frame, and now it's time to stamp. I'm stamping with Versamark ink, which is a clear ink, and it works great for this resist technique. I'm stamping that onto that coated specialty paper. Again, you could use glossy cardstock instead. Then you want to heat set it till it's completely dry and the images disappear. You can barely see them at all. Next, I'm going to apply dye ink over this. I find the darker the ink you use, the more magical the results are. I'm using an inking sponge. However, you can drag the ink pad across it if you prefer or use some kind of rolling tool. So I'm applying navy to the top, cornflower to the middle, and dusty blue to the bottom, and then I'm buffing off the excess ink. You can add more color if you prefer, and you'll see the images magically appear. That's the traditional resist technique, where you use Versamark ink, or a clear pigment ink, on some sort of glossy cardstock. Now on the frame, I'm putting some uh, Doris foam strips. They're really thin and flexible, right around the edge, I'll glue my resist oval onto a note card and then put the frame on top. I like that added dimension behind it. I die cut another frame from white cardstock just to cut off some extra leaves and these little leaves I'm going to glue onto the frame of my card. This little step takes a few minutes but it's definitely worth it because it adds a lot of interest to have those additional leaves. I'm also gluing on some pearls here and there. So there you can see the beautiful resist technique. This works with any stamped images. Again, I think it's better with darker inks and it gives you a really smooth, slick finish. If you've never done traditional resist, I recommend it and I'll link to a video here. Another fun kind of resist is where you apply black ink on top. You could use any color, but the black ink on top is really impressive. Now I'm going to start my card. I end up changing gears along the way, but I'll show you what I did just so you can get some more ideas. I first wanted to do a masked frame. So I'm using Avery removable adhesive sheets and I trimmed them down. So I had two that were four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm doubling up this masking paper. So I'm putting one right on top of the other. 
because I'm putting black ink over and I didn't want it to bleed through one layer. I'm using this Hero Arts nesting rounded rectangle die, taping it right to the center and running it through my die cut machine. Now I have a frame made of masking paper and it's doubled up. Next I'll apply this to a piece of white cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And we have that opening centered right on that cardstock. Next I'm going to apply color to this background. I'm using Distress Ink and an ink blending tool to create a rainbow effect. But you could do anything you want. You could even use patterned paper here. You could use colored paper, anything you want. But I thought the rainbow would be a neat effect. Once that's dry, I'm applying some stamps right over it, just arranging them. I still have that mask in place. I'm going to stamp these images with Versamark ink, but I'm being sure to use anti-static powder tool since Distress Ink sometimes holds on to your embossing powder. After I've stamped this with Versamark ink, I'm adding clear embossing powder. So this will just end up a little bit darker wherever the stamped images are with some shine. But when we apply an ink over this, which I'm using black ink, this is Versifying Onyx Black Ink, that heat embossing, that clear heat embossing resists the ink. So when I take a dry cloth and wipe over it, you can see that color is trapped under the clear embossing and resist the black ink on top. I'm removing the mask and I have a nice one layer piece here. However, I decided to put a frame around it, but if you wanted to, you could keep it one layer. I'm adding black around the edges because I decided to ditch the masking idea and add a frame over it instead. So I die cut that same rounded rectangle frame from a piece of white cardstock, put foam tape on the back, and I'm adding that over it so that our stamping is kind of set back. And then I'll glue this onto a white note card. So here you can see I used the resist technique to trap that rainbow color underneath and then put black ink on top. However, you could apply anything on top, watercolor, other colors of ink, whatever you want. Another fun resist technique is white pigment ink resist. This is one of my favorite things to do for backgrounds. You can use it for main images, but I really think the soft ghost-like look is excellent for backgrounds. Best for background stamps too. Here I put a cluster of the tree branches from that May Monthly Hero Kit onto my Misty and I have good old fashioned white cardstock here, just plain white cardstock. And I'm stamping these images with Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. This white pigment ink actually is great for resist. This is definitely my favorite of the white pigment inks. Now I'm heat setting this so that there's no shine to it and the image will pretty much disappear. Once it's completely dry, I'm applying Distress Ink with an ink blending to tool over top. You can use other dye inks, but Distress Ink is great for this, and I know many people already have it. You can see the white ink slightly resists the color we put on top. I used the Hero Arts Nesting Circle dies to cut a circle from that pattern, and then a couple of other larger circles that I stacked behind it. I have a Hero Arts Bird and Banners die here that I'm going to add to it, a little white bird. But first I'm stamping the Thinking of You message from this Hero Arts Swing By Soon stamp set that's also new with this release. So I'm stamping that with Versamark ink and then I will white heat emboss it. I really wanted a soft look for this card and that soft white stamped image with the white die cut is just the perfect touch. Now my card I trimmed down. This card is only three and a half wide by five and a half tall. That way I can have my circle hanging off the side, but it'll still fit in an envelope. Here you can see the final card. I put some dimension, some dimensional adhesive behind the wings of the bird and added some gems. And there you can see how it still fits in my coordinating envelope. So if you want a soft background, consider white pigment ink resist, and I'll link to another video here. Next we have embossed resist. This is a very common form of resist where you do heat embossing and then apply ink on top. We did this before with the black ink technique, but this time I'm using white embossing powder instead of clear. So I have a white panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half, and another white panel with the frame die cut from the center that I'm positioning on top, just while I position my stamps. Now I'm removing the frame, and I will use my anti-static powder tool and stamp these images with Versamark ink. This time I'm using white embossing powder. 
You could use any color you want. However, I think white embossing powder looks the most striking when you apply color over it. After I've heat set this completely, you can apply pretty much any inks on top here. You can use dye ink, pigment ink, watercolor. But what I'm using is Hero Art's Ombre Reactive Spring Day Ink. This is a new ombre ink pad. You can see the three parts of the ink that apply three different colors. I'm rubbing this back and forth across my uh, stamped panel and that way I can get like a stripe look going across it. I do kind of wiggle back and forth a bit to help blend the colors. If you get one color on a part of an ink pad where it doesn't belong, you can just wipe your ink pad off on scrap paper. As always with Resist, be, be sure to use a dry cloth to buff away any of the excess ink. Here I'm using an inking tool to just kind of blend the colors to, together more. And again, buffing off the excess ink. You can see that white embossing resists the ink that we put on top. Since this is a reactive ink, when you add water to it, it creates um, a whiter look in that area. And so I'm sprinkling on some water from a paintbrush, just flicking some water drops on for a little bit of interest in that background. I added the frame on top with foam adhesive, added a few extra die cut leaves, and there we have the finished card with that beautiful background using the embossed resist technique. Again, you can do this on any cardstock with any color of embossing powder. Next, I wanted to show you another example of embossed resist. I used direct to paper with my ink pad in the last example and some inking tools, but I wanted to show you can also use stencil brushes. So I've arranged some stamps on my MISTI. Remember, you could stamp these each individually with an acrylic block if you don't have a stamping tool. I'm stamping all of the images onto white cardstock with my Versamark ink. Then I'm going to again add white embossing powder. You could even use like a pearl embossing powder here and that would be beautiful too. After I added the white embossing powder, I'll heat set this. Now remember you can apply different types of color over this. This time I wanted a softer look, so I'm using these Tim Holtz Distress Blending Brushes and I am really excited about these brushes. I like that you can protect the brushes when you're not using them. And that piece that slides down, you can control how tight the bristles are when applying your color. It really holds up well and I've been happy with the results. So here I'm using a soft cornflower blue from Hero Arts. You can use a lot of different ink types here. And I'm brushing the color back and forth. Now you could stipple this by kind of pouncing up and down or moving in circular motions or just brushing back and forth. It gives this beautiful stenciled look and I like that the color kind of builds up around the white embossing. So you can see the white embossing is again resisting the color we put on top. I'm going for kind of a soft look here with a glow up in the sky. So I have butter bar ink that I'm applying up there. And again, you can control how the color goes down by sliding that piece up and down on the, br on the brush. And I'll show this more in a video in the future. So here I've got a soft background. You can see I haven't buffed off the extra ink from that top there. You see how the branches look a little yellow? But when I take the dry cloth to it, it really brightens up that white and you have a gorgeous resist technique. I added a die cut frame to this one also trimming off anything that's peeking out of the edge there. And I'll add that to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. I really like that tree frame die included in the kit. I wanted a bunch of extra leaves this time. So I used that new background die that you see there to the right. That's another new one from Hero Arts. And I die cut a bunch of leaves and glued them onto this frame. Those added leaves really add a lot of texture and really kind of make the card stand out a bit more. So there you can see a soft embossed resist technique using those fun brushes to apply the ink. So this embossed resist technique is best if you want crisp results. If you want softer results, you can use Versamark resist without heat embossing. This kind of looks like the white pigment ink one from before, but instead I use Versamark ink. This time I thought I'd create my own stamp from a die. So I have this Hero Arts feather die that I die cut from white craft foam. I'll go ahead and tear a few of the feathers off just to have some openings on my stamped image. And then I will temporarily adhere that foam die cut into my MISTI. You can use an acrylic block instead. 
So I'm going to actually stamp with this die cut. I'm inking it up with Versamark ink and stamping this onto white cardstock. Now this technique does work best with more solid images since this is very subtle or for background images. I double stamped it just to make it a little more obvious. Now that Versamark ink will disappear, but you do want to heat set it. And now I'm applying Distress Ink over the top. You can use um, other dye inks if you wanted to. You can see this is very subtle, definitely the most subtle of the resist techniques, but it is excellent for backgrounds. I decided to use it for a focal point on this card, but I do think it's best used for backgrounds. I couldn't find my corner rounder, so I'm actually using my um, rounded rectangle die to round each corner by placing it right into the corner of the die and running it through my die cut machine four times. I added that uh, to a card with a background die. This background die is another new one from Hero Arts that is just so beautiful. And I added a hello die cut to the front along with a happy thought sentiment that is from that same My Monthly Hero Kit. I also added some pearls to the background for a little bit of fun. So even though this is a soft looking resist, I kept the background soft so that the focus stays on that feather. Now remember there are other types of resist techniques out there including using acrylic paint and many other things, but these are a few of my favorites to share with you today. If you're interested in the supplies, I link them below in my YouTube description. You can go to my blog for more detailed information on these cards along with photos. In the middle are a couple other resist videos you might like. Thanks for spending time with me. Have a great day and we'll see you soon.